Okay. Good morning. It's a great privilege to be in front of industrial engineers, the thinkers of the engineering industry. Um, it's a great honor for me to do the uh, keynote address this morning, and in particular talk about capital projects. And uh, uh, I would uh, like to, to, to thank Dr. Hanani Nell for challenging me almost a year ago to talk about capital projects and industrial engineering. So that's what I'm, I'm doing. And I'm told that a keynote address is very clear in terms of its mission. It must introduce a policy or explain a policy, a concept, or an innovation uh, and or a result. And um, this morning I'm going to be talking about um, what, sorry, I'm standing in front of the projector, what uh, capital projects are these days and why industrial engineering is so important. And I've also got a challenge for you in terms of how to get involved and how we should and what we need in capital <coughs> projects. Peter, do I? Right. Sorry. What is industrial engineering? Do you know how many definitions there are? They're all over the world. And they're different. They have similarities, but they're different. My understanding is that, that industrial engineering is concerned with the design, development, or improvement of single and integrated work actions or systems where materials, energy, technology, labor management, in other words, knowledge and skills, information, machines, processes, infrastructure, and markets interact in order uh, to jointly serve the provision of services or production or delivery of products anywhere, agro, uh, petrochemical, mining, wherever. But it also includes, very importantly, the mathematical, scientific, physical, electronic, and social aspects of work definition. Uh, together with principles and methods to specify, uh, predict, and evaluate results obtained from measurement, definition, etc. And more importantly, uh, provide solutions for improved processes, actions, activities, and in particular, system dynamics in order to affect greater efficiency, productivity, and output at lower cost to specific quality standards. Have I got it right? Do you agree or not? <laughs> you, you're happy? Okay, good. That's important because otherwise I'm on the wrong track because I'm not an industrial engineer. But having said that, I have studied and noticed that trends in industrial engineering around the world is, are growing, particularly concentrating on technological innovation and its impact and innovation. Uh, implementation uh, is a very important part of that. And also in the clean energy industries, automation, manufacturing, value chains, and environmental management. Most of these objectives relate to cost, efficiency, and other issues. Now we come to the real problem. Now, that slide's not busy. That slide's seriously busy. <laughs> what can we do? Capital projects, there's no definition that makes sense. Uh, there's a definition that's written by accountants, which simply says a capital project is financed up front and is written off over time. And the write-off must be profitable. The problem is, that if you don't understand what a capital project is, you can't actually work with it. You can't innovate. You can't understand. So it's taken us about three months to rewrite the definition of capital project. And um, it's complex. And that's what I want to illustrate to you and get the message across, that it's very complex. So what we did was we... I won't go through the definition, but what we did was we broke it down into three areas. 
a network of infrastructure, infrastructure meaning road, bridge, rail, air, ports, seaports, tanks, pipelines, mechanical feeders, loaders, sets of buildings, complexes. These are infrastructure elements with sub-elements. So that's one sector within the capital project industry. And then you've got uh, a production facility, meaning a set of interrelated equipment, vessels, components, modules, and machines manufactured and constructed into an interconnected operational train or line on a site or in a building functioning as a factory or processing plant with each line train linked through utility supply, mechanicals, electronic systems, etc. A plant or a factory, in other words, is the second element of capital projects. And the third element is a specific or specialized machine or craft. Submarine. Space shuttle. These are capital projects, but they are all geared. The A380 project of Airbus Industries in Toulouse, France, is a good example of a capital project which is geared towards the mass production of a specific machine. And then we have the up and coming and mighty information systems, IT uh, world, in which you get two types. You get the MIS, which is the management information system itself, and how it operates and service, it's a service product. And then you get the ITCF, which is the, the integrated or IT creation facility. These are companies that build software packages and uh, other types, uh, even hardware packages, that provide you with the tools to work with the information. And therefore, I also talk about preparing a capital project and what it requires and what are the minimum criteria that are required in order to address the establishment of a capital project. And then we talk about how it's measured, assessing capital projects. So there's just one other point I want to make is that right at the top, I say that a project is any project whose cost is not expensed but capitalized on the budget or balance sheet of the organization. To qualify, must constitute an investment results in an asset that provides a strategic or measurable benefit or generates an income over its usable life. Those are different applications. Why? Because a submarine uh, doesn't make a profit. And uh, a space shuttle, everyone would love to make a profit, but it doesn't. And uh, a new factory does make a profit. So everybody's got a different classification. So it, but it must have a strategic benefit or uh, some form of, of benefit. All right, so just uh, an example. Of course, mining and beneficiation is one sector that we address in terms of capital projects. Infrastructure world, which is growing very rapidly in the world in order to cater for billions of passengers that reach transportable age or ages in which they can either be sponsored or pay for a ticket, whether that be railroad or in the air. And, uh, of course, the seaports and all of the freight and uh, cargo industries and their modernization are big areas. Pe process and petrochemical, growing at an enormous rate uh, and becoming much more sophisticated. Energy, which I already mentioned, uh, is one of the, the major sectors that, that, that is being focused on at the moment, including by industrial engineers, and obviously manufacturing uh, and aerospace projects, as I mentioned before. This is a typical capital project. Google. Google floor number four. What does it actually look like? That's what it looks like. Uh, the amount of computing capacity, frightening. Uh, and uh, that's just one floor. <laughs> so that's MIS, Management Information System, defined as a massive capacity within which to sort, store, collate, process, identify, supply, access, distribute information throughout the whole world by means of the Internet, which is signified down here. Alternatively, your ITCF or your IT creation facilities where, take for example, companies like Oracle and companies like that, they're in that business, 
now the building of the facilities that re are required for all of these to operate, these are all capital projects. Okay? And individual very big software applications for world production, those are also many capital projects within that capital project. So Oracle will be writing a new set of software which will control the future of uh, automation uh, involvement in motor industry for example. And that in itself is a small capital project. But having said that, that's a different sector within the IT. So that's very sophisticated program, simulation, testing, and so on. Now, what is a capital project in terms of how does it get established? The term bankable feasibility study doesn't exist. a myth. A study that a bank is satisfied with, that's a different issue. And each bank has different criteria, but bankable doesn't exist. What you have to do is you have to have a business case upon which you do a pre-feasibility study, upon which you create a basis of design for your capital project, which you then value engineer to purge mismatch potential and wrong assumptions. Then you have a feasibility study. And then you have a final business plan. And then you have an organizational design and setup to take the project to the next stage. Then you have detail engineering, because during your value engineering and during your final business plan, you will have decided on the most likely packages that you're going to include of technology or contracting or equipment supply and sourcing, manufacturing, whatever, fabrication. And during the detail engineering, you then provide the information that is necessary to those identified parties to provide you with the final cost. You then have value engineering too, to make sure that you haven't mismatched, duplicated, left out, uh, etc. elements of the project. And as the project grows in value from, let's say, $50 million as a minimum up to $100 billion, the intensity increases and the complexity increases. At the moment, we are designing a brand new uh, synthetic fuels project in southern Africa, and it will eventually have 32,700 drawings. Okay, now if you, know, you guys know, you're industrial engineers, how many things can go wrong with that? Yeah. Anyway, once you have got to the point of execution plan, uh, you, you are then ready for final environmental and community approval, which are two essential elements to this whole process. That's followed by commercial closure or financial closure. Uh, commercial closure actually refers to all the legal stuff that has to be done to finalize the whole project, from the rights to the land all the way through to the sales contracts of the product. Financial closure is when you sign the dotted line for the actual finance package, both equity and debt. Equity for, from the shareholders and debt from the syndicate of lenders. Then comes the project establishment phase where permits, licenses, and titles are issued. The detailed project plan is now ready to insert into the project management system and organization. Site establishment is running in parallel, and the logistics support infrastructure is now starting to come into place. During uh, the latter part, your procurement and sourcing is actioned. Manufacturing and fabrication in different parts of the world, maybe, of the different components and elements then there's shipping and then there's transport, no doubt, on land somewhere. And then there's maybe even site fabrication because you have large modules in some cases. Then the actual construction and then commissioning, testing, and then finally operation. Now, the complexity associated with this varies according to the size and value of the capital project. But it's highly unlikely that you should be following any other process than this. So what are the, the systems and elements that you use to manage this process 
essentially the organization, the standards that you're working to, the planning and scheduling, and all of the IT systems that you, you integrate in order to provide the information to the team and also to the players and key stakeholders. The quality system that you are using and how that comes into play and place with all the NDA uh, and NDT and that type of thing that you're doing. And then finally, your project management and control system, which includes finance and, and all of the other types of things. So these are the physical elements within the organization that uh, handle the project and provide the information to the management about how the project is doing. But let's talk about mismatches. Uh, in the computer world, you have architectural mismatches in systems design between computers and software. In the replication of DNA, I'm, I'm using very wide examples because wherever you go, there are mismatches, which is what I'm trying to illustrate. In DNA replication, you discover mismatches. And when it comes to human DNA, it starts to get really frightening because you pick up markers for cancer. These obviously one would ever want to be eliminated in the propagation. You pick up markers for alcoholism. How do we deal with that? And then you start to pick up other markers also that are associated with other things that become very complex. So just as a word of interest, DNA engineering is going to become a very, very a difficult legal and emotional issue in the future. But as long as we're sticking to plants and animals, we're okay at the moment. But having said that, there are mismatches that have to be managed. Component mismatches in size and type in assembly lines. Another example. Uh, the robot must pick the right size component at the right moment to fit to the element that it's constructing at exactly the right time. System order of activity uh, in robotics is another issue. If there's a, a problem with the programming and there are mismatches in the system, the factory starts to produce, well, it becomes chaos if it's big enough. And in capital project design and execution, we have mismatches between design, sourcing, by design, we mean engineering also. Sourcing, fabrication, logistics, construction, etc. For example, uh, I can give you a number of examples. Um, first GTL plant in the world, gas to liquids. Uh, mismatch between catalyst being used in a Fisher Trops plant, which converts hot syn gas into wax, a syn crude, which then goes into refinery to produce diesel and petrol. Mismatch between catalyst and the converter. Converter is a vessel, which is a pressure vessel made of exotic alloys with tubes and trays in it, made by supplier A. Catalyst, supplier B. Supplier A is in Germany and supplier B is in England. Mismatch. Who takes the rap? The owner. Really, at the end of the day. An example. Header, power station, northwest. Header is where there is a tubular connection to a vessel at the top of a boiler where the superheated steam is gathered dry to pass through to the turbine house. Two headers delivered, exactly the same for two parts of the boiler. Wrong. The other header should be the mirror version because it's on the other side. Mismatch. Okay. Uh, very famous South African oil company constructing a gas to liquids plant in Qatar. Um, very important tube section arrives. And it's the complete mirror version of what's required 
the drawing has been read almost inside out. Uh, many others. So, if I were to sit here and think about mismatches in capital projects ranging from all of the examples that I've given you, we would be here for three days. So, the point is that we have categories of mismatches. That's how many mismatches we have in capital projects. We have categories of them. Okay? Technology development stage and scale relative to commercially proven performance of that technological component. Salesmen are good at this, but when it comes to the factory or the site or the building or whatever it is that you're constructing, these, these have to be uh, made sure. You have to make sure that the performance of those components or of that unit is, is up to standard. Now, when you're constructing a submarine, which has six million components, this becomes fairly complex. Feedstock chemistry and physical properties in relation to technology performance. It's another one. What you normally do is you do a new technology development. You do uh, tests in smaller scale units. Or if you can afford it, you do a commercial test. But that requires a lot of feedstock. So it depends on how big the project is. Different technology and equipment. Uh, seamless operational integration. That means where you're joining modules together in a factory that make up a product. Uh, you, you're joining them up and you're processing part products. Uh, and you're using utilities. And uh, you're running a line uh, or a train. These are big opportunities for mismatches. Independently source manufactured components with faults, we talked about that. Modularization, which is now very popular, particularly in shipbuilding and train manufacturers and other types of industries. You, you end up with mismatches between very big modules, which can be very expensive. For example, the HMS Queen Elizabeth, the new aircraft carrier for the Royal Navy, one of the most sophisticated ships ever built, just launched last month. Uh, 70,000 tons, uh, state of the art, all modular. Only four modules. One, two, three, four. Bang. One small mismatch, big problem. Now, in terms of project execution, poor planning, uh, management information, con control systems, lack of coordinated reporting, logistical interruptions, force majeure or black swan events like catastrophic weather political labor unrest, financial market turbulence, the bank suddenly phones up and says, well, that one and a half billion we're about to give you, um, we're going to have to redress that package. <laughs> uh, contractor failure, owner organization ineffectiveness, lack of skilled labor, key man loss, etc. Now, you guys should be thinking, my word, what about opportunities for industrial engineers in this lot? <whistles> A veritable Disneyland. In large capital projects worldwide, that's over $1 billion each. 70% are delivered late and or over budget. 14% are delivered with mismatches intact. 42% <laughs> with additional work scopes not thought of during the project planning process and execution lead up, which I just went through for you on the slides. Lack of project execution system top view integration. So what do we do in the, in, 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 in the petrochemical project that we're building at the, or we're designing at the moment in engineering? Okay? We, uh, we will spend $90 million preparing. $90 million preparing. That's without one stone. Okay. And that team will have done everything in their power and it's a big team, to have done everything properly. And the trouble starts the minute you press the button. <laughs> this is the nature of capital projects. And boy, there are all kinds of things that are going to happen. And that's where we fall down. It's the execution phase that the circus begins. Okay. So there's a lack of project execution system top view integration. 
of key information. Why? Because we've got design systems, scheduling systems, procurement and sourcing systems. We're mon monitoring manufacturing and modularization. We are, have control over shipping and logistics. We've got transport lined up. We've got our site fabrication shop est uh, established for the assembly of the larger components. For example, you're moving a vessel from A to B, it weighs 2,000 tons, you can't put it on the road. So therefore you have to cut it up into sections and you cut the sections and you take them and you put them on the road and when they reach the site, you re-weld them together and you produce the original unit. Okay. And the construction elements themselves, the cranes and the interface between the material yards and everything else. The lack of integrated risk and impact assessments prior to project execution are common. Incomplete project rollout integrity and potential failure testing doesn't exist. There is no simulation available for this type of project implementation. Whether it's once-off, as Roland was suggesting, or whether it's repetitive, there is nothing. Risks are managed on the run. Boy, you need a water bottle and a pair of shorts and you need a headlamp to keep up with this lot. So, we're talking about advanced risk and operation simulation and training and management for the project execution phase. For example, look at flight simulation today. It's incredible what they do. They are able to train pilots, 90% of them on the ground. Uh, this makes for a better pilot and a far better operator. Okay, let's take it up a notch. Nuclear power station control rooms. Anybody go in? Have a go? I don't think so. <laughs> Not advisable. So what about simulation? They have enormous simulators which actually are duplicates of these power control rooms where student operators, if you'd like to call them, or aspirant operators can physically get involved in understanding how to control the nuclear power station or the nuclear plant. Uh, let's take it up a notch even further. Astronaut training. Physical dynamics and environmental training for astronauts. 90% simulation. Plant operation simulation, computer-based for large facilities. I've just spoken about that. Computer-based challenge models. We've got them in business and in training. PDA programs we've got. Potential deviation, deviation anal analysis programs, which are specifically written for specific functions. Now, what do we need for integrated capital project execution? We need a new, two new software packages that provide two functions to give us the vertical integrated picture. So if up to now, when we manage a capital project that's going forward, we're sitting in the car, in the front seat, at the wheel, but we're facing backwards. And we're steering that car by looking at what's happening through the back window. Not so good. Okay, so we need to see what's happening. So we first of all need the simulation program. We need to be able to re run the project before we build it. And then we need an actual project rollout tracking software where it gives us integrated real time on event risk and impact reporting using key data points from the project management and support system and outputs. So in the simulation side, we would be running the project effectively through a specially written program for each of those sectors, which you could acquire, where you have a master programmer who holds the program in-house in the company. And he runs the book according to the simulation of what it is the project is, and you have various mismatches, simulations, failures, and others that you can choose from and program, and you put the team through a series of simulations before you roll out the project. Okay? So, you end up by integrating your sector. Sectors are design, sourcing, manufacturing, fabrication, modularization, construction, commissioning. Those are your sector groups. So you've got systems that already deal with information that provide on that. 
And you integrate that with the standards, organization, planning and scheduling and IT system and all the other service elements of the capital project control system. And that enables you within this package to A, do the simulation and B, do the real-time tracking. So industrial engineering plays a very important role in the analysis of what is required to put into this program by identifying uh, uh, the execution requirements of those sectors or those reviews as defined. And also to uh, review for integration the opportunities and design of the data provision or the generic receiver for the simulation package. And to identify and program the, the mismatch and failure analysis for each of those sectors. And then, of course, we have the overall model design the simulation, module specification and description, and the advanced real-time project tra tracking requirements, which is then handed over to the software operators who then prepare the packages, the design, they program and they test it. They value engineer it, and then the final development. So this industry is crying out for this capacity, this capability, this, this type of... of uh, uh, tool that we, we desperately need. Thank you. never been done before and it's something that we want to develop and we can't do it without the help of industrial engineering groups but from a computer standpoint from a hardware and software standpoint it's more than doable it's not that sophisticated it is sophisticated but the risks are it becomes too complex so it has to be kept to a certain degree simple but in talking to project directors of major capital projects in the past, guys like Dr. Howard Roberts at Moscow, Dr. John Marriott at Sassel, Charles Bass at Sassel, people overseas, okay, they all say, oh, if we'd had the top view, the project, we would have saved millions. So this is an important role because this role of putting this together is essentially an industrial engineering role. Because industrial engineers are the only people that the process engineers, the executives like myself, who I'm not an engineer, can talk to, to help us to integrate and build this thing. So it's a great challenge for the future. Partitions and walls. That's right.
Yeah, you're 100% right, and I agree with everything you're saying. It's actually an international problem. There are projects in Malaysia and America and everywhere else that are all over budget. There's, there's big companies. There's Anglo-Americans, BHPs, Shell, all over budget. Shell Pearl was supposed to cost $14 billion. It cost 24. So, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. Shell's the world champion in the oil business. They still get it wrong. So at the end of the day, it's a huge thing. And what it is, in order to overcome the issue of sectoral engineering proficiency, should we call it, within your team, this is a management-driven issue. It's not about engineering. It's about management. And it's an executive down approach. So I've been... Uh, doing this informally in my projects for quite a number of years. And I've de de developed what we call questionnaires and lists. And if I sit in the meeting and ask the first five questions and they can't answer them, the answer is they haven't done enough homework to be able to satisfy the potential integration philosophy or problem that we're going to face. So Every executive I've spoken to who's responsible for not just the engineering sector, whether it's electrical or mechanical or process or whatever, th this is an overall integrity issue, which has nothing to do with that other than the engineer responsible for that section has to make sure that everything he designs or she designs is, has integrity in terms of its own system or own boundaries, okay? But in terms of the integrity of the overall project itself as an integrated unit, that is the responsibility of the top management of the company. And those are the guys that are saying, guys, we've got to do something now on an international basis that makes sense. And the right people to assist us, because they're clear thinking, they don't have the same disease as the electrical engineer who says, no, I'm going to do it my way. Industrial engineers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we are. But again, that's a two-dimensional view because it gives you a certain uh, information which relates to the integrity of the drawings versus the requirements versus the specification. Okay? And it spits out uh, irregularities or mismatches associated with that specific function. What we are talking about is taking that information and integrating it with all the other elements, including uh, the logistics and the time of manufacture and who the manufacturer is, and integrating it into a three-dimensional view along with the outputs of all the other systems so that the project director has a 3D picture of what his project looks like. So, uh, a mismatch in technology manufacturing in Germany or in England or in America has an impact. Suddenly you can see it in logistics. Suddenly you can see it in finance. Suddenly you can see it in uh, schedule on site. Suddenly you can see it with a line all the way through it showing you where it goes and what is the actual overall impact to the project director. And he will say, guys, if that happens, this is what's going to happen. And then we've got a problem with A, B, C, D, E, F. So we do have two-dimensional systems and we do have uh, more dimensional systems within systems. We can go to six or seven dimensions within those systems. And we don't have an integrated top view.